Android. Now at 6, Joplin police announced new details on last night's double shooting, including the name of the suspect. Plus, Fort Scott officials launch an effort to beautify the city's east side. And a familiar Carthage landmark celebrates a milestone anniversary. The four states' most watched news starts now. Joplin authorities today released the name of the suspect in last night's double shooting, and we're learning more about the circumstances. This is KOIM News at 6. I'm Dow Quick. They've arrested 19-year-old D.W. Bryant of Joplin. Police were seeking charges for first-degree assault, first-degree robbery, and armed criminal action. Police believe Bryant shot two men on the 1700 block of South Any Baxter Avenue last night while trying to steal marijuana from one of them. The shooter fled the scene, but officers found Bryant nearby and initially arrested him for outstanding warrants. Police later determined he was a suspect in the shootings. The two victims are a 19-year-old man who was shot in the abdomen and a 20-year-old man who had multiple gunshot wounds to both legs. Uh, two individuals that did have injuries from gunshot wound, uh, gunshot wound injuries uh, here on the scene. Uh, currently, uh, they're listed in uh, serious but stable condition. Bryant has a criminal history for the armed robbery of a pizza delivery driver. Part of his probation in that case states he may not possess a firearm. No one was seriously hurt in a traffic accident involving a Jasper County deputy today in Joplin. Happened at the intersection of 7th and Main Street just before 11. Authorities say the driver of a pickup truck failed to yield at the intersection and struck the deputy's vehicle. Windy out there and warm, borderline hot. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty. Yeah, right around uh, 90 degrees once again for us today. We've dropped back a couple degrees, but still way up there. 87 in Nevada, 86 in Monette. We have 90 at Grand Lake, 90 in Welch. We can head up to Iola at 85, Independence, Sedan sitting at 88 degrees. And then if you factor in the humidity, you get the wonderful heat indices. The heat index sitting into low to mid 90s. Very windy for us today. Southerly winds kind of kicking in all day long in that 10 to 20 mile per hour range, but gusts have been higher than that 30, 35 miles per hour at times. We have some cumulus clouds, but looks pretty good for us during the evening hours. Thunderstorms booming out to our west. They are going to try to head toward us, but will weaken as they do so as we go through the evening hours. So if you're getting out, we look okay through the 80s, 70s, and of course we'll look at the heat again here in just a bit. See you soon. Voters in Oklahoma still have a bit of time to head to the polls to cast their ballots in the state's primary election. In Ottawa and Delaware counties, voters will decide the Republican candidate for state offices, including corporation officer and District 1 state senator. There are also some county office primaries in Delaware County and a tax question in the town of Bernice. Polls remain open until 7 tonight. City officials in Fort Scott, Kansas are beautifying the east side of town, starting with upgrades at 3rd Street Park. KOIM's Amber Jenkins has more. Beautification projects in Fort Scott, Kansas are underway, focusing on parks like on 3rd Street. We have done a lot of work on the 3rd Street Park bathrooms in particular. Um, for as long as I can remember, they've only had um, toilets in those bathrooms. On each side, they didn't have sinks. So this year, we had new sinks, sinks installed, you know, just adding some things like Toilet paper holders, paper towel holders, trash cans, things that we didn't have before previously. It was very bare minimum before. The project is paid for with grants and with Everdee's donation of a 35 foot Wi-Fi pole. So we would be able to control the bathroom locks um, and the security cameras. So we've been working on that for a long time, but it's wrapping up now. According to city officials, Third Street's park bathrooms are set to open in a couple of weeks. Teenagers living near the park say it's just in time for summer plans be outside a lot and play and go to parks and stuff. <laughs> Recently, a fire incident happened at the park, burning parts of the playground. The teens say the charcoal remnants are a reminder to take care of what the city improves. I think that kids around here should be more respectful with the play equipment and not be disrespectful and just roundhouse around like and destroy stuff. Definitely things could be much better around here. I do think Fort Scott is a pretty place, but definitely could be worked on. Reporting in Fort Scott, Amber Jenkins, KOM News.
Now, the fire incident Amber referred to happened just three days ago. The Fort Scott Police Department observed smoke coming from the playground area. Fire crews arrived to find a piece of playground equipment fully engulfed in flames. While there are currently no suspects, this incident is being investigated as an arson. The playground equipment is valued at about a thousand bucks. The Carthage Chamber of Commerce today celebrated a milestone for a local landmark. The Precious Moments Chapel and Gardens marked its 35th anniversary with that ribbon cutting. The event served not only as a way to look back on the chapel's history, but also as a way to look forward. We have a lot of exciting things coming in the future. Um, we hope to build on Mr. Butcher's dream as well and to keep going with all that he's planned. And we have just redone the museum to tell the complete story of his life. The occasion marked one of the first events Precious Moments has had since the passing of its creator and founder, Sam Butcher, who died last month at the age of 85. Some Pitt State softball standouts get to show off their skills in the classroom. John Dale says their story coming up later in sports. But up first, we take you on an air adventure to a hidden gem of a state park in Kansas. Sure sale. Some local anglers were casting their lines on this National Go Fishing Day. Kellogg Park in Carthage turned out to be the perfect spot to reel in the big one, or maybe make up the perfect fish story about reeling in the big one. If you have proof of your big catch today, post your pictures to social media with the hashtag National Go Fishing Day, not Duck Day, Fishing Day. Summertime for many families means getting out of the house and hitting a favorite vacation spot. One such spot is the Crawford State Park in Farmington, Kansas. KOAMC photojournalist Ty Parks gives us a bird's eye view of the park. So Crawford State Park was originally constructed in the 1930s as a fishing lake. Uh, it wasn't designated as a state park until 1965. Uh, so it was built by the CCC, which is a Civilian Conservation Corps, um, with the idea it was a fishing lake, and then designated as a state park in 1965 approximately 120 or so private homes in our park, which makes us unique. A lot of state parks don't have um, private lots for sale. Uh, so we do have the private land ownership and then every, everything surrounding the homes is owned by the state and the park. So we have a beautiful lake, uh, 150 acres, uh, mostly used for fishing. We get a lot of boaters out here, jet skis, uh, people tubing, just wanting to have fun. Uh, we have uh, 83 utility campsites. Um, which is either electric or electric and water, 28 primitive campsites. We have group use areas that families can rent out uh, and enjoy kind of more privately and secluded from the rest of the campsites. Uh, we have beautiful hiking trails, um, three just, just for hiking, one is hiking and biking. Um, there's a lot of history. We have the spider leg trail, which is down by the hatchery, uh, which holds a lot of history to it. You can see old structures from the original CCC camp that was here. Um, have five cabins uh, to rent. They're beautiful. They're remodeled this winter uh, inside and out. Uh, people really enjoy those. Uh, great view of the water and more seclu uh, secluded from the campgrounds, a little more privacy um, and just enjoying the people. You know, we have the marina uh, restaurant out here, which is really popular with people. So favorite part, I gotta say the wildlife out here, uh, just coming out every morning and um, you know, you're always met by deer, wild turkey. We have a few bald eagles that hang out around here. I just love, love seeing the wildlife. You know, we're a smaller park compared to some in the state, so we have uh, fewer staff members, but the whole team does a great job uh, keeping this place looking beautiful, all the buildings uh, functioning for our guests, which is really important to them, uh, to have access to the bathhouses, the showers, uh, keeping everything just in good shape. It's beautiful. If you haven't checked it out yet, you really should. The Crawford State Park is also known as a quality perch and crappie fishery. Anglers can also reel in catfish, largemouth bass, or northern pike, just in case you're planning for next year's National Go Fishing Day. A little bit later, the Joplin Police Department wraps up their first ever Kids Academy. Plus, the heat and the humidity stick around. What about rain? We'll look at that coming up.
Well, of course, hot. It was humid once again. It's almost officially summertime, but uh, June uh, meteorological wise is, of course, the first month of summer. And it's been feeling like it over the past week, week and a half. Looks good right now. Here's a nice shot of our Cornell Arts and Entertainment Tower Cam. We're at 7th and Joplin Street looking off toward the north and to the east. Pretty good shot. Have those cumulus clouds across the region, but overall it's looking pretty good. All right, 89 Chanute, 90 in Welch, 90 in Miami, 87 in Anderson, Bella Vista sitting at 86, Pittsburgh, 87. Carthage is checking in near 90 degrees, but we still have heat indices kind of in that 90 to about 93 degree range. And of course, those are going to stay kind of high as we go through the next several days. At the airport in Joplin, 90 south winds at about 20, but we're getting those gusts up there 30, 35 miles per hour. Check out the southerly winds, sustained winds 15 to 20. And then if you look at our gusts, we've been getting gusts 30 upwards to 35 miles per hour. These will start to calm down late tonight and it won't be near as windy as we go into the daytime hours tomorrow. Not much going on. We do have thunderstorms booming out to our west, severe thunderstorms. You can see the severe thunderstorm watch really from Wichita up towards Salina. Uh, these are mainly wind and hail threat. These actually extend all the way up into parts of Minnesota, but these aren't going to affect us too much. They're going to head toward us, but they're going to weaken and start to fall apart by the time they get kind of close to us. In fact, let me show you as we go through the evening, we are dry. A few scattered thunderstorms get into our northwestern county. So the best chance to get anything late this evening into tonight is the 8th Center for Donia, Neodice, Chanute, Iola. Everybody else pretty much stays dry. We drop back into lower 70s. Thunderstorms ongoing. Central Kansas tomorrow. Not for us. Partly sunny skies, mid 80s by noon. But once we get into the afternoon, we're going to get isolated showers and thunderstorms, meaning hit and miss storms, 20 or 30% in coverage across the viewing area. So that means 70, 80% of you won't see a drop. These will die down as we go through the evening hours and then we're fine through tomorrow night. Thursday should be mainly dry, temperatures warm as we go right back up near 90 degrees once again by the time we head into Thursday afternoon. Then it just kind of starts getting hotter. All right, 72 in the morning, 85 by noon, 88 by four, high temp of 89 degrees. Those hit and miss scattered thunderstorms during the afternoon. Heat indices very similar tomorrow compared to what we saw today, mainly in that 91 to about 94 degree range. And then they'll be going up again by the time we head into Thursday afternoon. All right, so let's look down the road near 90 the rest of the week. Some hit and miss thunderstorms Saturday night, which could be strong to severe. Hit and miss storms most of next week, but really heating up. We're going to have temps into the mid 90s, even upper 90s with those heat indices well above 100. So it will really get hot next week. 89 tomorrow, 89 Thursday, 91 Friday. Thunderstorms Saturday night into Sunday morning. And then uh, it looks like just kind of hit and miss storms for us through next week. We need a few hits and we not do. so many misses. It's going to get dry out there. It is. It's already starting to. Thanks, Doug. Still ahead, three Pitch State softball players are named academic All-Americans, and a Missouri Southern baseball player received some recognition from the Mink League. John Dale says those stories and a lot more. It's coming up next. Pittsburgh State softball is getting the job done both on the diamond and in the classroom. College Sports Communicators announced today that three members of the Gorillas team receive academic All-American honors. Heather Arnett is named a first team academic All-American. She has a 3.8 GPA while pursuing a bachelor's degree in elementary education. This comes after Arnett was also named a first team All-American from the National Fast Pitch Coaches Association. Hannah Burnett is a second team academic All-American and has a perfect 4.0 GPA while pursuing a Master of Business Administration. She was a third team All-American on the field. And Hannah Martin is a third team honoree. She also has a perfect 4.0 GPA as a history major. Pittsburgh State Athletics announces its 2024 Hall of, Hall of Fame class today. Eight Gorilla alumni will be inducted into the Hall of Fame the weekend of October 5th. 
plenty of names you might recognize. Current PSU women's basketball head coach Amanda David, 2011 national champion and former NFL wide receiver John Brown, along with Pitt State football current assistant coach and passing game coordinator Mark Smith. We'll have more details on all eight inductees on our website. It's koamnewsnow.com slash sports. Missouri Southern softball has four players signed to its 2025 recruiting class. The team announces this week, Ashlyn Hewlett, who just graduated from Rogers High School in Arkansas. Her high school teammate, Cadence Janney, also from Rogers. Bailey Jonah Dillon from Olathe North and Easton Walter from Grain Valley High School in Missouri. All four of them are eligible to play next season. Cy Darnell, who just redshirted his freshman year at Missouri Southern, is playing for the Jefferson City Renegades this summer. Today, he's named Mink League Player of the Week. The 2023 Webb City grad is batting 500 in his last four games, and he leads the league with his 400 batting average on the season. The Joplin Outlaws are more than a quarter of the way through their inaugural season in the Mid-America League. They enter play tonight in sole possession of second place. The Outlaws' opponent this evening is Abilene, who's in first place and has a five-game lead over the rest of the league. Joplin has struggled away from Joe Becker Stadium in road games this year. The Outlaws have a record of 4-8 and eight compared to 4-1 and one at home. First pitch is at 7:15. I'll update you on the score later tonight. Over to Major League Baseball. If the postseason were to begin today, both the Royals and Cardinals would be in control of the second wild card spot in their league. Cardinals beat the Marlins in extra innings last night, which brought their record above 500 for the first time since early April. Redbirds have won seven of their last ten tonight, second of three in Miami. As we come on the air, St. Louis leads seven to four in the bottom of the fourth inning. Royals are on the West Coast tonight, taking on the A's. First pitch not until 840. Kansas City just lost two of three to the Dodgers over the weekend. Now since the Athletics are set to play their games in Sacramento after the 2024 season, this three game road trip will be the final time the Royals play in Oakland. That's it for sports. We're back. After Here's a look at what's coming up on KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. Joplin residents head to Mercy Park for a colorful event. Plus, educators doubled down on a warning from the Surgeon General about the dangers of social media for young people and how outdoor workers can stay safe in this intense heat. It's really bad in other parts of the country. Those stories, a lot more, is coming up tonight. KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. The inaugural Joplin Police Department Summer School Kids Academy came to a close today. Participating sixth graders got to experience what it's like being a police officer. The kids got to tour JPD facilities, learned all about law enforcement careers, including SWAT and canine programs. They also got a chance to practice their handcuff skills on some officers. Chief Pearson presented all the kids with a certificate of completion. I'm sure it was an enjoyable week for the officers and for the kids. Absolutely. It's windy out there, Doc. It is, and it's going to stay windy throughout the evening hours and then into the overnight hours tonight. But they calm down tomorrow. Still hot, kind of hovering right around 90 degrees, a hit or miss storm tomorrow afternoon, but heating up as we head into the weekend. Final sports note. Later tonight, I'll have updates from that Joplin Outlaws game in Abilene. Playing the first place team is daunting, but you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. Absolutely. We'll see how it goes. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you right back here at 10. Let's make it a great evening.